appear in North America and only migrate south to avoid the winter. In fact, the opposite is true. Birds such as warblers, vireos, tanagers, and flycatchers are all considered to originate in tropical regions. These birds fly north to mate, but spend more of their time in the south. So, why do birds migrate? Birds may migrate for a variety of reasons. Of course they want to stay where the weather is hospitable for them, but there are other driving factors as well. Many species want to take advantage of resources, so they move depending on what areas have food for them. Migration also makes sure that there is not as much competition for nesting space. Much like humans, birds travel fairly often. In order to properly reach our destination, modern day technology such as GPS and online tracking systems allow fast navigation from point A to point B. Unfortunately for birds, they don't really have our thumbs and can't use our technology too well. The navigation systems that birds do have are actually far more complicated than we can imagine. The Bird Positioning System, or BPS for short, allows birds to migrate to any destination without ever being been there before. It's a great sentence. <laughs> without ever traveling there before. That's an actually good one. One of the primary mechanisms that birds use for navigation are the position of the sun and the stars to find their way. This method is actually similar to the way many early ocean explorers navigated our world's oceans. Using distinct constellations, early navigators were able to have a rough estimate of direction on the open sea without any specific landmarks. Similarly, young birds are able to follow these standard sun and star positions in order to reach their migration destination. In addition to these visual cues, Night migratory birds can use the magnetic field of the earth in order to properly orient themselves, much like a built-in compass. This ability to interpret magnetic fields allows for birds to navigate without strong visual cues. These compasses are located within each of the migrating bird's eyes. Generally speaking, birds migrate in large groups in order to reduce the amount of energy it takes to travel such large distances. These flocks travel along predicted pathways known as flyways. These flyways serve as superhighways for migration. For certain species, there can be multiple flyways depending on which season migration is taking place in. If flyways are like highways, then stopover points are like rest stops for birds. Stopover points are used to rest and more importantly, refuel before the next leg of the journey. The yellow warbler is a kind of bird known as a neotropical migrant. This bird is one of the most numerous species in North America, but they're only here in the summer. Each winter, they fly down to live in the mangrove forests of Central and South America. Neotropical migrants are birds that do exactly that, spend the summer in North America and the winter in the tropics. The wood thrush is another example of a neotropical migrant. It spends much of its time in the forests of Central America, but it comes here to North America in the summer to breed. These robin-sized birds spend most of their time on the ground, turning over leaves to find insects. This is hard to do when the ground is covered with snow, but it's even harder when there are no leaves to turn over. Wood thrushes are experiencing a dramatic decline in population due to deforestation in their winter habitat. Historically, the migration patterns have been recorded via personal diaries, journals, or the observations of scientists and even farmers. However, there's been a modern day push for further population studies on migratory birds. The largest of these programs is the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's eBird website. eBird allows for birding novices and experts alike to make casual observations for citizen science. These visual observations of migrant species allows for a large database to be collected and used for population studies. Although eBird.org and its emphasis on citizen science is extremely helpful in determining overall movement of bird populations, more in-depth studies will be imperative in diagnosing migrant species in the coming years. These studies use a technique called bird banding. Bird banding involves individual birds of a species that are captured, tagged, and released. These tagged birds will then hopefully survive until the next season to be captured and identified again. Furthermore, GPS tags can be attached around a bird's ankle to track a specific location during migration. Active bird banding studies include the North American Bird Banding Program and the Monitoring Avian Productivity and Survivorship Programs. Both of these programs monitor migration patterns, but also provide helpful statistics for assessing the need for conservation efforts on a specific species. Being that migration usually spans an incredibly large distance, the threats to migratory birds can be numerous during their journey. 
the largest issue is the availability of food resources followed by exposure to predators and human-related disruptions. In recent years, taller buildings, communications towers, and wind turbines have all contributed to migratory bird mortality. Continued changes to our human infrastructure may have a critical impact on established flyways or current stopover points. Groups such as the National Audubon Society or BirdLife International focus on conservation efforts in many areas around the globe. They seek to protect precious habitat, natural resources, and the birds that live there.